We're ready. There we go. Okay, everybody. Thank you for bearing with us. And as you can tell, we've got the very talkative, talented, and wonderful D Medium with us tonight. So I don't even have to do a lot of talking. Um, D, would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself or tell us all a lot? Uh, <laughs> right, where do I start? Um, Anywhere well, you want. Right, okay. I'm 50 years old. I've been a spiritual medium for 20 years. I started off in the spiritual churches in and around, in Scotland. I eventually started traveling all over from England, Scotland, over to Denmark, Germany, and things like that. Um, I was actually at a new train. I've been to Stansted and Lambert Fellowship. Uh, I was under quite a few me- well-known mediums in the spiritualist movement, not necessarily famous, but they are known in the movement, Glenn Edwards and Muriel Tennant. I also do trance, transfiguration. For those that don't know what that is, trance is when the voice changes and your guide comes through and uses their voice to speak. Although there are different- meditation. And transfiguration is when they change the face. The face actually gets changed and you can see spirit's face over oh, your no. Usually with transfiguration, though, it's done under red light in a dark room. It's normally under those circumstances, but sometimes you can see it outside. Uh, I'm trying to think well. I was in Denmark for a while, but I'm now back into Britain, uh, working back over here again and doing readings. I also do PAL Talk, uh, which is where I help people to develop and give them information. Uh, I also have my Facebook, D Medium. It's under Diane Connolly, D Medium. You just put D Medium under uh, Facebook and it comes up with me. I have a community, I have a group, and I also have my wall. And I post spiritual information, all aspects of things, like the new high vibration, uh, ascension, about um, what we've been going through, a lot about the spiritual awakening and things that are relevant. Also about life, because spiritualism isn't just about spirit and about sensual and high vibration and things and about guides. It's also about the way we live our life and how we deal with things. So a lot of it's about life and how we cope with things like getting rid of negativity from our lives and things like that as well. Is that good enough? <laughs> Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. Uh, and then tonight we have decided that D, D I've, I've been talking with D for quite some time and um, the synchronicities just fly. The energy is incredible when we speak. Um, it, I mean, it's just raging. And we did decide quite some time ago when I asked D if she would like to come back on again, if she would like to talk a little bit or a whole lot. <laughs> about a lot of the energies. Um, I know a lot of you guys are feeling it, just like we are. And we've got some really strange and incredible um, energies that are going on, the shifts. Um, but I do feel that this one coming is going to be a big one. So if D would like to talk a little bit about that. Well, we've been going through a lot spiritually lately, and it's been affecting a lot of people. Starting back, well, actually 2000, but 2012, we got the new higher vibration, which came in. And a lot of spiritual mediums were anchoring down this new energy. And this higher vibration is what's known as the heaven vibration, bringing it down to the earth plane. And with this, it's bringing in a lot of new people uh, spiritually. It's going through a spiritual awakening. Because people are going through ascension, they're raising the level of consciousness from third dimensional to fifth dimensional thinking. And a lot of this is to do with the higher vibration. Now, with the higher vibration, we're actually starting to anchor it down. We're bringing it down here because it was very difficult and it's very hard to stay on the higher vibration. But I will tell you, once you actually get onto this higher vibration, it's actually amazing. And there are certain ways to help you to stay on this. This higher vibration is on the levels of 500 is unconditional love. 550 is joy. 600 is uh, inner peace, 700 is enlightenment. Then after that, you start going 700 and above is the level of ascension. Although you have to go through the levels of third dimensional, fourth dimensional. To actually understand the fifth dimensional, we have to understand the fourth dimensional, which is basically about the spirit world and a different level way of looking at life. With this, we're coming out of third dimensional thinking, which is about material things. Material possessions aren't important anymore when you get to that. You start to see things in a different perspective. You can see it from different angles. 
Now, with this higher vibration, to stay up on this higher vibration, negative things like uh, anger, frustration, shame is really low. It's like 20 on the vibrational scale. So if you've got shame, you're almost on the level of being dead. It's not very good. Anger, frustration, all these are below the hundreds. And we want to keep the vibration as high as possible. And this goes for light workers as well. The way to keep your vibration very high is laughter. That's a really good way of keeping your high vibration and staying on the high vibration. Also, for example, listening to music is very good to keep yourself on the high vibration. And sometimes what I say to people is have a happy song. When you're feeling down or someone's going on at you or something bad's going on, have a song that makes you feel really good that you want to dance and sing to. And sing it in your head because the vibration from singing or like even music raises your vibration and it helps you to lift you up. So, and it helps you to get out of negative situations and helps you around negative people. Because with the higher vibration, and especially what we've been going through lately, we can't stand being around negative people. We can't stand negative situations. So you're finding that you're moving on from people that you've known maybe for years that have always been there because you've seen them in a different light. You're seeing them from a different perspective. And you're seeing people who are negative. And it's not necessarily the bad. It's just you can't handle being around negative people. So we're moving on from that. But sometimes we still come across negative people. Sometimes it can be family uh, family members or that, that are negative. So by kind of having a happy song, by laughing and that, it helps to raise the vibration a little bit to keep you above that negativity. Once you actually get anchored onto this higher vibration, negativity doesn't affect you the same, but it takes a while for you to actually get used to staying on there. Often you find that you go up and down a lot. So it's like sometimes you're there and then you kind of take a slip down and it's really, really bad and it's raising your vibration up again as well. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just reading. I'm sorry, I was just reading. I can't do multitask. Right. Uh, yeah, breathe. I know people tell me to breathe all the time. I do it without pause. Um, oh, okay, have, GG well, is... Gigi is asking if you can recommend anything for this very powerful moon. I mean, is there anything or is there something we can do to harness it for more positive vibes? Well, if certain people go outside and actually embrace the energy from the moon, especially with it being so strong and big at this particular moment. And as well, you've got to remember it's about new beginnings. It's about new starts. It's about putting out positive vibes as well. So, uh, for example, there's anything in your path that you want to let go of. Write it down on a bit of paper and burn it. This is a brilliant time for new starts. So if anything that you want to plan, anything you want to start, this is the time to actually do it. But really into bringing down the moon energy, I would say you're actually better going to the higher vibration. The moon energy is there and we can use it and enhance it. But the higher vibration is permanent. With this uh, moon energy and what's going on, it's only for a short period of time. So we can use it while it's here. But to stay on the high vibration, you can stay there all permanently. And really, if you stay on the high vibration, then it doesn't really matter about the moon alignment or the planet alignment. It doesn't affect you the same. So it's actually really good to keep yourself, as I say, to the higher vibration. It's good to like watch what you eat and stay enough red meat if possible, exercising, uh, cutting down on caffeine or cigarettes if you smoke, give up if you're able to, uh, staying away from negative people and situations, as I said before, be around people that are positive, people that you love, do things that make that you love, read spiritual books if you like spiritual books. If you're artistic or that, it's not about being good at it, it's about actually just doing it. Uh, it's about doing things that you love, finding your passion. And these are ways to kind of keep on the higher vibration. And as I say, this is more of a permanent aspect. When the moon comes in, it brings in different changes. So it's a good time, as I say, to get rid of the old and start the new. And we've been going through a lot of that lately with the moons coming in. It's very positive and it's great for new starts. But the higher vibration is something that you can stay on all the time. So once you're up there, you're always making new starts anyway. You're always on a positive aspect. So we can enhance the energy by taking it in. Meditation is very good if you want to take the energy from the moon at this particular moment in time. So by meditating, you should find that your meditations may be deeper, that you may have more intense meditations at this time. And you can use that energy when you're actually meditating to make things manifest into your life as well.
Yeah, well, as I say, with the high vibration, it's very positive. Everything is positive. As I say, you're on a level of unconditional love, inner peace. And once you find like the inner peace, it's always there. So you can always find it again. The problem is finding it to start off with. And with these higher levels, you're able to find that. As I say, unconditional joy, uh, unconditional love, joy, inner peace, enlightenment. Now, people have a misconception about enlightenment. It thinks you know, it's going to be all knowing and this, that, and the other. It's going to be amazing and overwhelming. But what enlightenment actually means is just understanding your path in life. It's basically being able to see that everything that's happening in your life is the re is for a reason that your path is meant to be that way so when problems come along in your life you know it's meant to happen you know there's a reason behind it and as well it's like coming into a new consciousness and with the higher vibration you can see the positive in every negative situation and that's the important bit looking for the positive in every negative situation even if it's i'll never do that again even if it's okay i learned not to do that or i learned not to get into that situation even if you do that it's still a positive and a good thing as well is, is being able to laugh at yourself the ability to be able to laugh at yourself is makes it a lot easier to be able to handle life and situations and i feel that being on this higher vibration is so amazing you're actually able to stay up there and so many people don't understand how we do that or how it actually works and some people think it's a bit delusional but once you've actually been on the high vibration once you've had a taste of it you want to stay on it you want to get back to it and I do I promise you it changes your life and with it comes changes as well because you're seeing life differently and it kind of blends in with the spiritual awakening and the ascension as well all three are kind of combined there's certain aspects in each one so you start to see how your life is, You like especially with enlightenment. You see your path. You start to reassess yourself. You start to look at who you are. Often we get lost in who we are. We become a mother. We're a daughter. We're a wife. We forget who we are. And it's sometimes we find that we're not happy in our situation. And it's about making changes. And often the changes is finding the courage to actually follow through. And when we start to reach these higher vibrations, we have that courage because we have faith, we have belief, we know that everything's going to be all right. We don't always understand it, but we just know everything is going to be okay. Everything is the way it's meant to be. And that gives you the courage and the ability to be able to carry on and to be able to handle anything that comes your way. Uh, sorry, some, click on the headset icon at the top left. Yeah, I think that, so. DJ, okay, DJ does oh, no. now have right. sound. Oh, and sorry, Diane, thought... that is one thing that I could. Uh, Diane is so freaking positive about everything. I'm <laughs> telling you. I mean, Diane is always positive. Um, I try to stay as positive as I can be at all times too. But Diane is always so positive. And she can laugh. She can make you laugh. And she's very, very down to earth. And she doesn't try to be anybody but herself. And I really admire that about you. Oh, thank you. So continue well, on. <laughs> kind of on a personal note, when I'm talking about this, I'm not telling people to do something I haven't tried myself. That's I wouldn't right. tell you about this higher vibration and how to get on it and stay there unless I actually knew about it and actually had tried something myself. I don't believe in doing that. And it's not just me. I've been teaching this to other people and I've found, seen what it's done to them and how it's changed their lives. And going on a kind of personal note, with this higher vibration, I started to take a look at my own life. And a lot of people maybe thought I was slightly crazy or insane, but I decided I wasn't happy. And I needed away from negativity. I needed to change my situation. And I basically packed up and moved countries. <laughs> I yes, <just> moved. You did. <laughs> yes, totally and utterly. <laughs> I had pure and utter faith. And you can ask Jennifer, you can ask Darlene. I was so positive. I was going back to my home country from Denmark and I had no job. No money, no home, nothing. <laughs> and I had total and utter faith because I knew it was right. I knew it was, me I knew it was meant to be because of being on this higher vibration, because of being able to see enlightenment, because I was able to see what I was meant to be doing. And I looked at myself and my life. I decided to make these choices and it's not always easy to do.
And as I say, a lot of people didn't understand it, especially when you say the universe told me to move. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, exactly. And just as the day that you did tell me that you had decided to, you know, move along and, uh, you know, do what you did, the energy that Diane had was just flaming. I mean, I could feel it through the headset. She was on fire, and you could just tell in her voice and the expression on her face, I mean, she was a fireball. And just as that day, I mean, I can feel it now. Um, I can just feel and see that Diane is so much happier. And, you know, like she said, she practiced what she preached. And it is amazing. And I wouldn't have had the courage or the ability or the anything else to get out of the situation I was in unless I'd been on this higher vibration until I'd reached these higher levels. I wouldn't have had the courage. A lot of people don't understand it because they're not on the higher vibration. <coughs> Excuse me. So they were scared for me. I was like, that's a big step. That's an awful lot. But I had total faith. I knew it was meant to be. And that's what happens when you're on the higher vibration. You can see what's meant for you. You can see the path that you're meant to take. You can see it's all about being happy. It's all about love. And if you're not happy and you're not in love, you've got love around you, you need to change the circumstances. You need to change. And the higher vibration makes it easy because the negativity just rolls off you. What I did was a big thing to a lot of people. But to me, it wasn't a big step. It was the next step of my life. It wasn't a big, gigantic leap. It wasn't going into the known, unknown as such. I was just taking the next step that I knew I was meant to. And I will say, I believe in the universe. I believe in spirit looking after me. And I believe that my path is meant to be in this direction. And you can get to that stage as well where you know what's important. And basically, I was told to leave all material aspects behind. I left everything. I walked away with a suitcase full of clothes. That was the only thing I walked away with. And I'm being totally legitimate about that. The material possessions didn't make it. They didn't matter to me. I had so many possessions, so many items, and it didn't matter. They're only possessions. You can get them back again. So many people are so worried about, oh, well, what about leaving this behind or leaving that? We don't need material possessions. All we need to be is happy. And we have to do and find what makes us happy. And the people around us, they should appreciate that we should make ourselves happy. And if they don't, then they're not out for your best interest. But if you're not happy, you have to make the changes for yourself. But it is difficult. But the higher vibration just makes it a lot easier to deal with things like that and to change, to help with the negative situations. And with that comes in people are going through the spiritual awakening, which is very similar. <coughs> Excuse me. They're actually starting to wake up spiritually. They're not to the point where they're actually on the higher vibration yet. But they're starting to open up and see things differently. If you think even 10 years ago, 20 years ago, not even, even probably less than that, people were just out to get readings. That's all they were interested in, what's going to happen in my life. They maybe went out to get healing occasionally. But a lot of people didn't actually look at the bigger aspect of spiritualism and didn't look into the deeper aspect. <laughs> okay, uh, they didn't look into the deeper aspect of spiritualism. And what they, uh, without looking into the deeper aspect of it, now they're coming forward and asking more about spiritualism, about themselves, looking at themselves and their lives. They're starting to look at things differently. They're starting to see things from a different aspect, which they've never seen before. They're starting to realize that they're not necessarily happy with their lives or that there's changes needed within their lives. And again, this goes in with the higher vibration. But just because you're going through a spiritual awakening of that doesn't mean say you can't go into the higher vibration. You don't have to be doing what we do for years to be able to reach the higher vibration. People like me who are spiritually aware, I've been anchoring this vibration down for the last few years so that everyone is able to benefit from it, regardless of what level of understanding or how spiritually aware you are. So anyone's able to access this. But with the spiritual awakening, a lot of people are going through a confusion. They don't know what's happening. They don't understand what's going on around them. Uh, they're sometimes feeling like they're going a bit crazy or a little bit insane because things are changing. They're seeing things from different perspectives and they don't understand what's going on. And part of what I do and others like Darlene and Jennifer that 
and others in the room is to pass on that information to help them and guide them through it because we've been there we know what it feels like we've already experienced it and so many who don't understand it they're finding confusion they find that they're lost they don't understand what's going on and they need the guidance and it's about people like us passing that information on to help them move on <coughs> excuse me sorry <coughs> So we've been passing this information on, but a lot more people are coming to the spiritual awakening. So we're finding over the last few years that people are coming to us, looking for this information, looking for this guidance. Uh, I'm getting some water, thank you. Looking for this guidance, looking for this information. <coughs> and we were told years ago to be prepared for this. The uh, likes of myself and others who help uh, teach others and bring the knowledge to them have been told and we've been getting prepared to give this information. And we have noticed over the years that more and more people are coming forward for this information. More and more people are coming forward and want you to know about the bigger aspect of spiritualism. And I want to say to you what spiritualism is about. People don't really have a concept, although now spiritualism is a recognized religion. Spiritualism isn't really about who you pray to. Because in the spiritualist movement, we accept every religion and belief. Spiritualist, spiritualism is about the kind of person you are, how you live your life, how you treat others. It's about what you do. It's not necessarily about who you pray to. As I say, we accept every religion and belief, and that's the biggest part of it. We don't discriminate against anyone. A lot of other religions don't accept what we do, but we accept them with open arms but it's about the person that you are. And often through a spiritual awakening, the first thing you go through is looking at yourself, looking within yourself. Who are you? Who, what is my path in life? What am I meant to be doing? Because often when you go through a spiritual awakening, you have this yearning that there's something bigger you're meant to be doing. It's, there's something more that you're meant to be doing in this life, even though you don't always understand it. And with this as well comes in light workers. Because light workers are now being called up, so a lot of light workers have been going through this situation as well. And a lot of light workers have actually lost their flame over the years. And lately they have been going through a really bad time because the flames have got low. Now the basic idea or principle between a, about a light worker, as we know, is to help others. And that is what's major. That's what it's been about, is to help others. And often in that process, light workers have been neglecting themselves which is actually not a good thing. And with the neglecting of themselves and not feeding the soul, not feeding the flame, they've lost that flame. It's gone so low. And a lot of them are retreating within themselves. They don't want to go out there and help people. They don't want to do things because they've been hurt so much in the past. But there is a bigger aspect as well with uh, light workers that's coming up. Now, people know that I've heard maybe that the light workers are being called up, but nobody really understands what they mean by being called up. Yes, we understand that they're there to help others, and that's the basic principle of it, but there's a bigger aspect to it. With the higher vibration coming in, the light workers are being called up to shine as bright as possible. The flames need to be built up so that they can shine, because if we bring the higher vibration down to the earth plane, we cannot have darkness in this earth doesn't mean it's not negativity, but the darkness on this earth. And what that will do is the brightness, of because there's more light workers than ever before, they will shine brightly. And if they shine the brightest possible, they will remove darkness from this earth plane. And with that, people say, well, that will take the balance out because you have to have yin and yang. You've got to have light. You've got to have the dark. But if you look at the earth from like on the bigger aspect in the universe, it's a tiny little dot. So the earth to have that, uh, to have no darkness on it isn't going to upset and set the balance of the universe at all. But we need the light workers to shine as brightly as possible. And this year has been about light workers actually feeding them their soul, feeding the actual spirit, uh, building the flame up so that they shine brightly. <laughs> okay, somebody has a question. <laughs> all right, well, you have a question, darling. Darlene, you can speak. Yes, I can. I rebooted all my computers. Thank you very much. Hi, sweetie. I'm glad you're here. Um, somebody asked me a question, and I think you're the perfect person to ask it to. Um, this person asked me, I believe in everything spiritual. I believe in, in the guides and the guardian angels and everything else, but I have my doubts. So is that what's stopping 
her from going further along on her path because she has doubts. Is that what's blocking her? Even though she's open as, as she thinks she is, is that what would be the blockage? Okay, now I mute again. Right, okay. Well, being skeptical is a good thing, right? I do not believe that we should go in completely blind and believe everything that we hear from everybody. Just because somebody tells you something doesn't mean to say it's true. Spiritualism is also about thinking for yourself. And one of the spiritual uh, beliefs is what's right for you might not be right for me. What's right for me might not be right for you, but we're right for ourselves. So you have to find your own answers. It's about being an individual. It's about thinking for yourself being able to decide for yourself what you feel is right for you. And it doesn't matter whether others agree with you or not. It's about what's right for you because we all think and process information differently. You could be holding yourself back a little bit because you are a bit on the wary side, but that's natural to start off with. The more you get involved in it and the more you do it, then the more confident you get. Like, for example, when you first start developing, you don't know your guides. You don't know who they are. So you end up, eventually you start to get to know your guides, you start to interact with them, and you build that confidence up with your guides. And proof comes. Proof does come into yourself. Nobody can give you the proof. For example, even as a medium, I cannot give you the proof that spirit exists. I cannot give you that proof, but I can give you information that will give you the proof to yourself. Spirit bring in proof to you. So spirit can give me the information that will be proof to you, but I personally cannot give you proof. I mean, my experiences, I could tell you, oh, I had this happen to me and this happened and that gave me proof of spirit, but that's not your experience. So yes, it might sound, oh, wow, that's amazing. Oh yeah, that's good. But it doesn't prove to you that spirit exists because it's not happened to you. You have to have your own experiences, your own personal experiences to really believe. But that comes with time. And I would say to you what we always get told off spirit is patience. It comes with patience. As you go on and you develop, you'll become more confident, you're more sure, and you'll be able to trust more. So it takes time and patience to build that up. I'm not sure how long you've been into spiritualism or how long. Some people have been to a short while and still even trust in spirit. Some take many, many years. In saying I remember I used to say, I trust in spirit. I believe in them. I totally and utterly trust in them. And I went about and people said to me, no, you don't. And I was like really offended. Now, if there's something that actually hits the core, you don't always realize it, but you get offended. And I was offended by this remark because I believed in spirit. I believed it existed. I believed I was protected. And one day I was doing chants in the church and you have six mediums in front of you to protect you. They sit there to protect you so that the congregation can't affect you when you're actually uh, doing your trans transfiguration because it can be that dangerous to the medium. And this particular day there was a problem and the six line of descent didn't work. And there was people in the room that started, uh, in the room that actually started causing, they were making noises, they were flashing lights and everything like that. And uh, sorry, Jacob's actually Danish, so he doesn't really understand English very good. He's good at English, but he's not 100% good at English. Sorry, I just went to add that in. <laughs> or Jacob, I should say. Right, so I was sitting there, and the line of defense didn't work. There was scraping of noises. There was actually lights being flashed, and it could have been a nasty situation. And at that particular moment, my guide came in front of me like a brick wall. I could feel the energy. It felt like there was a big brick wall of energy in front of me. And after that day, I realized I hadn't totally trusted spirit. I didn't really know what it was like to trust them until I needed them. And then after that, I never, ever doubted again. I always knew they were there to protect me and look after me. And that was the day where I realized that's why I was offended before, because I didn't really trust. I thought I did. And every level, I thought I trusted them. But really, I didn't. And really, I think until a situation like that arises, we don't really understand how much we do have trust in them or how much they do protect us. So I know when it comes down to it, my guides are there for me always. But I would just say patience and time and just carry on your journey. It comes with time. And same with proof. Proof will come to you at the right time when you're ready for it. Because you might think you're ready for it, but you might not be. It's when spirit decide that you're ready because they know you better than you know yourself. So you sit there and you start and you've been at it five minutes and you think, I want proof, show me spirit. But you're not ready for it. Some people get the proof that they need and they're not ready for it, so they don't accept it. 
it's when the time is right, the proof will come to you. But it's good to listen to other people's experiences, but that doesn't prove to you that spirit exists. You have to have a personal experience to um, totally and utterly have that proof from spirit. So I would just say have patience. And yes, you can be blocking yourself a little bit, but that will come uh, over time. That will start to go away and you'll start to trust them more. You'll start to believe more. You'll start to have faith in them more. I have total and utter trust in spirit, but I've been doing this for 20 years. When I first started, I was like everyone else. I didn't have the same kind of trust. <laughs> Excuse me, I do apologize. I've got a bit of cough. I didn't really understand it. I didn't have the proof. I was like everyone else. As I've progressed and went on spiritually, it's come to me over the years. And I know it is a personal thing. It's not something that you can learn from someone else. It's not something you can experience for someone else. It's something that you have to experience for yourself. It's like the higher vibration. You've got to experience it for yourself to totally understand it. It doesn't matter how much I tell you about it. It doesn't matter how much I give you. Uh, it doesn't matter how much I... Sorry, my son's in the room. Ah. <laughs> my son's actually still in Denmark and I'm in Scotland. If you give me a second. Hi, Jakob. Hi, darling. Hi, Robert. I love you. <laughs> but now it's not a good time to talk. <laughs> I do apologise. <laughs> oh, that's quite all right. Um, no but, apologies necessary, Sugar. Family is family. Yeah, it's just uh, it's, I've not seen him for a little bit, so I spoke to him. So he's just wanting me to know. Right. But I love you, darling. And I know you're watching. And I'm glad to see you here tonight. And you too, Jakob. Uh, but Jakob's from Denmark as well. So they're both in there. So you've got national, you've got multinational in tonight. <laughs> but uh, as I say, it's a personal thing, like the higher vibration. Until you've actually experienced it, you don't really understand it. I can tell you about it. And I can give you ways to get there. I can give you ways to keep on that high vibration. But you've got to do the work yourself. I can tell you how to do it. But you have to do it yourself. I mean, with spiritualism, they'll guide us, or with spirit, they'll guide us and give us information. But if we don't put the work in, it's not going to happen. We have to take the first step. If we take the first step, then spirit will help us and guide us along the way. But if we don't take the first step, then it will never happen. Because spirit cannot make us do anything that we don't want to, because we have free will. They are called guides because they guide us. Most people think they're there to tell us what to do. But they're not. They're only there to guide us. They cannot force their opinion or anything on us without our permission. It's an unwritten law that they cannot make us do anything against our free will. But if we ask for help, if we ask them to come forward, if we do what's best for us, they will always be there to help us and take us along the path. The other aspect I wanted to bring in as well was the ascension level that's been coming in as well. People are raising the level of consciousness and they're starting to see from third dimensional to fourth dimensional. I'll go into a minute about the fifth dimensional, but we're going from third to fourth dimensional. And that comes again with the spiritual awakening. As you see, everything's connected. So I kind of maybe seem I'm going off topic, but it's actually all connected. So we're going with special spiritual awakening. It's a third dimensional uh, from third dimensional to fourth dimensional thinking. And it's a completely new way of seeing things. You start to see solutions to problems. Third dimensional, all we can see is problems. Everything's always negative. Everything's always bad. It's always about the material. It's about money. About being better than somebody else. It's about the ego. It's driven by the ego. When you come to fourth dimensional, it's not the same. It's about finding, as I say, the solutions to the problems. It's about seeing ways around things. It's about looking with different eyes. It's seeing things from a different perspective. It's understanding what's actually, what's best for us. It's about finding happiness and about knowing that love is the major factor. It's not about how much money you've got. It's more about the kind of person you are and how much love you have for others. It's not about how much possessions you've got. It's about being happy at the end of the day. It's a completely different way of looking and to see the eyes and like I see on Facebook and things like that and these people post things and it's like, oh, this person did this random act of kindness and it's all over the place and they pass it around because it's something amazing and unusual. Why? I don't get it. Why should somebody doing a random act of kindness be so amazing that it's got to go viral because nobody's ever seen this happen before? It doesn't make right. sense to me. What, you know, I'm sorry, 
you should be people do random acts of uh, random acts of kindness all the time. Certain people do anyway, others don't. But as I say, they post it on Facebook like it's something miraculous, something amazing. Why? It should be natural. We shouldn't have to sit there and think it's a, it's good to publicise it and to let people see it. But it shouldn't be made to be such a strange thing, such a random, such. It should be natural. More people should be. I actually at one point tried to get people to do a random act of kindness. And I have spiritual pages and I know a lot of spiritual people. And you know something? I was so disappointed. Darlene did it. I didn't know Jennifer at the time, so I'm not going to comment on Jennifer. She didn't know me at the time. Darlene did it and a handful of people did it. That was it. And I knew a lot of spiritual people who went about professing how spiritually aware they were and how they did this and that and the other. And Nobody did it. I was like, you know what? Just do a random act of kindness, post it and just do people and then nominate five other people. And there was only, I think, maybe less than 10 people that actually did it. I don't understand. You'll put a bucket of cold water over your head, right? You'll sit and lie about like a log, right? In stupid positions. But you won't do a random act of kindness. And these are spiritually aware people. People who are supposed to be like me, like-minded. People who profess to be spiritual. And they wouldn't do a random act of kindness and post it. And some people says, oh, well, it's kind of, bra it's not bragging. It was just saying, let's do it and pass it on. One random act of kindness can make a difference, especially if you pass it on. And I must admit, I was so disheartened. It really, really disheartened me. And this is like, it should be natural. But we start to see things from different perspectives in the fourth dimensional. We start to see it's not about doing something, just a normal everyday thing. Something silly, something like smiling at somebody in the street, saying hello to someone. You don't know what that person's going through that time. You walking past them and saying, good morning, how are you? Or having a little conversation or smiling at someone. That can change their day. That person could be about to give up and think, right, that's it. I'm going to end my life. There's nothing worth living for. And you smile at them or say, hello, how are you? And that changes them. That makes them stop them from doing it. So random acts of kindness aren't always big things. It's not about giving loads of money or doing a big massive thing. It's the small things that make a difference. All people, for example, someone's ill, they can't get out of the house. Go to the shops for them. Something silly, sometimes even talking to an old person. They're lonely, they don't see the family, they have no one. Talk to them. Often there's something simple as that, and it changes the way they see life. It changes their day. It uplifts them and makes them feel good. And that's what we're reading about spiritualism, is making people feel good. And we start to see that money's not important, and this comes in with the new higher vibration and everything that else is going on. Attention that we're coming into, and what's coming up, because we're going through, uh, through to the age of Aquarius, the spiritual age. And we're realizing that money isn't important. Material goods aren't important. It's about the kind of person. It's about the soul. It's about feeding the soul. It's about helping others. It's completely different. The whole world is going to be changing. It's already started now, but it's going to take a long process, but it's starting to change. And it's not going to be money. It's not going to be power. It's the, per the kind of soul that you have, the heart that you have, how you treat others. That's what's going to be important. And you know something? I want to see that day come. I really am looking for that day. And even if it doesn't happen in my lifetime, what I'm planning on, I'm doing it for my children and for my grandchildren so that they can have the kind of life that I would want them to have, that they won't have to be scared of walking down the streets, that they're not going to be on the streets without food or without help or without anything, that they're going to be given what they needed, that somebody, if they're in a bad situation, will be there to help them. Because I would help anyone if I was able to. And I just hope that one day if one of my children or one of my family or someone I know needed the help, that they would be able to get the help of someone else like I would do to them. But we're coming into such a major age. It's coming into such a brilliant time. It's, get, it's getting to the point where, I do apologize, uh, coming to the stage where everything is changing. And it's already, we start to see slight changes. Some people in 2015 went through the level of ascension. And what did that happened was we went from fourth dimensional thinking to fifth dimensional. And that's to do with the power of the brain. Because fifth dimensional, fourth dimensional, 
we don't understand our capacity with the fourth dimensional that's why we're able to connect to spirit because the consciousness we raise it we start to see things from a different point so our psychic abilities get stronger we're able to see spirit we're able to communicate with them we're able to manifest things with just the power of our mind by thinking about something we're able to manifest it in our mind when you start to get the fifth dimensional to the ascension level we can actually physically heal ourselves you wouldn't need a doctor we have the ability to actually heal our physical bodies naturally uh, we're able to kind of use the power that we cast as fantas fantasy at the moment, like Fantastic Four has been able to use telepathy, move objects with the mind, uh, the ability to actually have and project your aura and your energy around yourself. Things that we class as like fantasy and comic book and things like that are actually going to become a reality, an all day reality. Like controlling time, being able to slow down time and speed time up at will. Uh, the ability to be in more than one place at one time. That's when we start to reach the fifth dimension, ascension level. But unfortunately, not many of us actually reached that level. Until recently, it was actually just like gurus and such like and Buddhas and that that were able to reach that level. But since the higher vibration, uh, we've in 2012, more people have actually been able to reach the level of ascension than ever before. So now people like you and me or those that are developing are now able to reach that level, whereas before it was unattainable. So now we're able to get to that if we carry on and develop ourselves, often through meditation, through uh, the way we live our lifestyle, by just changing and raising our level of consciousness. And you've got to remember, we never stop learning. We never stop raising our consciousness. and We never, ever stop. Even when you get to fifth dimensional, you don't stop because you've got six, seven, eight, nine. You've got so many more dimensions on top of that as well. But people went to the fifth level of uh, fifth dimension uh fifth level of thinking the fifth level of consciousness and um, but some people as well went through the level this was in 2015 where well, some went through the level of ascension it was the first wave the first people like who were kind of classed as normal and i hate to use that word but not like gurus of that who don't spend their life meditating were actually able to attain the level of ascension now with the others and that it's like yes some were able to reach that level the ones that weren't ready for that level actually raised the level of consciousness so people who had been developing spiritually like me went up a level of consciousness and then a lot of people went through a spiritual awakening there was a mass of a lot of people went through spiritual awakening now we're able to be more people are still going through spiritual awakening but it was more of a mass at that time now that you find that people are still going through spiritual awakening it's easier for them although some people are still closed-minded and still don't understand and possibly not ready for it but eventually everyone will go through the spiritual awakening more people are starting to raise this consciousness and now even though we've been through the first wave it's supposed to be three ways of going through to ascension even if you want, uh, you don't have to wait for the second wave of ascension, you can actually now reach the level of ascension. But it takes the dedication, it takes a lot of meditation, it takes a search souling within yourself. There's a lot of work goes into it. But when you put the time, the effort and energy into it, you can reach these levels. You can go as far as you want. And that goes with any aspect of what we do, whether it's raising the consciousness, whether it's just being psychic, whether it's opening to spirit, whether it's trying to reach the level of ascension. The more time, effort and energy you put into it, the more you will get back from it. But what we're aiming for at the moment is to reach the level of ascension. That's what us spiritually are. As I say, some are just opening up at this particular moment. Some are just raising the level of consciousness, but that's where we're all wanting to get to. But even once we reach the level of ascension, we've still got a lot more to go on. There's never, ever stop learning. Once you stop learning, you're basically had it as far as it goes i mean especially spiritually you some people get to a level and think i know everything and i don't need to know anymore and that and they close their mind down and they're not listening to new ideas or new thoughts they close themselves down they're not going to develop any further they're not going to go any higher and maybe they're at a decent level and maybe they're happy with that but technically we keep on developing we keep an open mind we keep on learning and part of the learning process isn't just taking information it's about processing it it's about thinking for ourselves deciding it's also about listening to other people's opinions and other people's ideas even if they disagree with what you think even if they disagree against your ideas you listen to them you process it 
you think about it and then you think, well, okay, I still don't believe it. <laughs> but at least you thought about it. At least you processed it. At least you went through the stages. So then you've got more confirmation behind what you believe because you've listened and thought about the situation instead of just saying, no, nope, don't believe you, I'm not going to listen to you and cutting yourself off. But I actually remember one time, the more I've actually learned more from people who actually know nothing about spiritualism, who are not even open. People come to me sometimes and I can answer questions and have no problem. The ones that have stumped me, and there's only been a few that have really, really stumped me, was actually people who didn't know anything. And they've left me to the point where I've had to go away and sit down and literally think about it. And one of the questions I was actually asked, and this was a few years back, and it was like, as a spiritual healer, we do not get diagnose people. We are not doctors. We do not diagnose people. We do not do that in any way. It's against what we believe. We work with the medical profession. And someone came to me and says, well, what happens in a third world country? Say, for example, a third world country where there's no medical professions, there's no doctors, they can't get the medical help. And they come to you and you find out they've got cancer or a terminal illness. What would you do then? Would you tell them? Because in most countries where you have medical health and that, we do not interfere. I wouldn't tell someone, oh, you've got cancer. I would never turn around and say anything like that. That's against what we believe. I am not a doctor. I cannot diagnose you. Regardless of what my ability, I'm able to know that information. You're not allowed to do that. But this actually made me think, what would happen if it was somebody in a third world country? What happens if somebody wasn't able to get to a doctor? What would they do? And I actually went away and thought about this for days. And I actually came up to the conclusion that actually if you told somebody in a third world country that couldn't get medical help, couldn't get a doctor, that they actually had a condition like cancer, really it could make the situation worse because they're walking about oblivious to it. So therefore they're living their life normally. Given them that information could be devastating to them, it could affect their life on a bigger scale. But I thought about it. I were actually sat down and thought about it, and I actually saw the principle where you could actually break what you believe and actually diagnose somebody in that situation. But I still stuck to my principles. But as I say, I sat for days and thought over that. And that was someone that didn't know anything. And I thought that was actually a really good question. And that's one thing I do love is really, really good questions. Like, okay, I'll pause for a minute. <laughs> I've left Jennifer, but I don't think Jennifer would No, that's it. okay. That's okay. No, you're, uh, you're doing real good. Take a break. Take a sip. Yeah, no, breathe. Yes. <laughs> we'll talk for a little bit. Now, if anybody in the chat room, hi, this is me, Darlene. No, I'm not on camera tonight. Isn't it nice not to have to see me? Go ahead, Brian, go ahead. Anybody in the chat room, if you have a question, Dee is always open to um, to questions. And it, as you can see, you might have a question that will stump her. And trust me, one question, if she hasn't answered it by now and she's been going for like almost an hour, if she hasn't uh-huh. answered it by now, yeah, baby. Uh, she, oh. you will get it. Now, don't, don't, oh, my God, when we get you talking, we get you talking. <laughs> Okay, I didn't know it was as long as that. I actually that's thought I'd better stop in case there was any questions. Yeah, <laughs> but that's fine because you have given everybody a basket load of information. Mm-hmm. Hey, Sandra, and 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 I think it, it's it's going to be going to be a lot of people going to back listen to the archives because you have to remember to breathe, darling. I know I do that. I've got a bad habit of that. It's, the it's energy okay. Flow. You get into your rhythm and you just like ching. Well, Darlene first came to me, it was a friend of ours. She was actually wanting to find information about a certain aspect of spiritualism. And she says, oh, go and see my mentor, go see Dee. So she contacted me. So I got told she had loads and loads of questions that she wanted to ask me. And we actually just typed on Facebook for about 10 minutes or something. And then we actually went to voice and I'm like, okay, right, give me a question. She's like, you've answered them all. (laughs) I was so disappointed. I was looking forward to questions. I'm really sadistic like that. I love questions. Yeah, but I posted. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you, Gigi, for posting in the the chat room. I keep forgetting to save that number. But yeah, if anybody has a question, you can call in. You can 
mic up, that just means turning on your, go back to your headset and turn your mic on, but do not unmic yourself. There's a little hand down at the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. Click on it, and if your hand is up like mine always is, because I always like to talk, um, then we will come to you and, and ask for you. You can put your own on mic, and, and you can uh, ask your question. Okay, now I'll show you again. No, do you ever ask questions for me? I don't know whether it's just I tell everything or go over every aspect. But <laughs> you do tell everything, but I'm sure there's people out there with some kind of questions. Anyone? Oh, no. Nope. Okay, so we just go on. <laughs> Are you okay? Okay, Jennifer, uh, I've sort of taken over your, your, no, your show, it's, so it's I'm going to... quite all right. And Dee does. She she answers all your questions without you even asking. Mm-hmm. But that's a good thing. Hopefully I give you yeah, something to think about as well. Of course, you always do. Hopefully. It, sometimes I think if you put a seed into someone's mind, I think that's always better. Trying to force your ideas or opinions on others, it doesn't work. They're going to get defensive. They're going to cut off. They're not going to listen. But you put a little seed in someone's mind, you make them go away and they think about it, then that's when it starts to grow and that's when you've got them. Why do I keep hearing beeps? Yeah. I just heard that as well. Odd. Okay, somebody's beeping. Is somebody... Not that's me. My, that's that's my thing, but I'm not touching a dang on thing. And Sandra is pressing the eleven. Dang it! Is that ah, there you scary? go? Sandy, <laughs> did you want to say something? There you go. I want to say hi. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> Hello, Sandy. How are you? Good. How are you guys doing? Doing good. Mm-hmm. Doing good. So I have a question for D. Yes. Go ahead. How long? I'm how, how old am I going to be when I go through menopause? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying a word. Not too old, because believe me, when we go through menopause these days, we're still young at heart. So that's <laughs> more of a medical question, actually. I actually sometimes think I'm going through menopause because when you get spiritual healing, you get hot flushes. <laughs> so you don't know whether it's actually the menopause or the healing. <laughs> right. Uh, am I, I going to be mean? Mean old pals? <laughs> well, this thing is you don't have to be before. It wasn't accepted or acknowledged as being a condition. But I think more people actually understand menopause these days. And there's a lot more things you can actually do to help menopause. So it depends. If you are mean and not beforehand, then probably you will be. <laughs> So if you want to do that beforehand, then probably not. <laughs> I think that's uh, a personal thank, choice. Ah, <laughs> uh, thank you, Dee. You're fun to play with. <laughs> Might not always be the answers you want, but it's realistic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm done playing. Thank you guys for letting me play. You're welcome. It's okay. I love fun. Laughter is good. It raises the vibrations. I love any questions. And I did say any questions. I've had some really weird questions before. Uh. Like, <laughs> but uh, no, I love questions of any kind. But no, laughter always raises the vibrations. It's always good. I love to have laughter into it. It just makes things a lot better, especially when things start to go a bit stale or things like that. But even if you've got a question about different aspects of spiritualism, not necessarily what I've been talking about, because maybe I've answered everything you want. If there's a different aspect, if you want to know about trans, transfiguration, more about spiritual awakening, more about any aspect at all, I usually cover most aspects of spiritualism. Anyone that knows me, I go on Pal Talk. I usually help people and answer every question. If you want to know about healing, about how to develop your abilities, about how it works, anything really, I'm quite open. I have one for you. You um, are a very well-known mentor, and you have um, uh, you. Oh gosh, how can I say? You teach without teaching, but you teach. So if anybody wants to get a hold of you and find out where they can talk to you, aside from Skype, you do say you, you have Pal Talk. So, um, so that if they want to learn, if they want to expand their spirituality, get into their mediumship, how can they get a hold of you? Right. You can get me on Pal Talk on the de ecstatic medium. 
I actually have a room on there. I've not been opening it recently, but I will be going back on. And usually it's Tuesdays and Thursdays that it's open, and I do post times. But if you put the ecstatic medium on uh, Pal Talk and you message me, then I will get back to you and give you information about when it is, times and dates and that. Because it can be difficult to find the room. But you go into the room under chat rooms, then you go into religion and spirituality, under spirituality, and then it's there. But you only see the room when it's actually open. Easiest way to actually get hold of me is on Facebook. You put in D Medium on Facebook, it comes up me. Uh, D Medium, I have a community, I also have a group, and I also have my own account. And if you want to join to any of them, you're welcome to. One is Diane Connolly D Medium. That's my personal account, but I accept people onto there as well. I post information about aspects of spiritualism, uh, about how the higher vibrations, about ways of living your life and things like that. The spiritual group, which is the Medium International Spiritualist, is actually more deeper aspects of spiritualism. It goes into the more deeper aspects uh, about raising your consciousness and things like that. So it's a lot more detailed, a lot more in-depth. And I do answer questions if you have any on there as well. I have my community, which is the Medium Spiritual Community, but that's just kind of general everyday stuff about how to live your life and how to get by on normal things. It doesn't go into it as deeply. Uh, or you can actually, I do have the Medium International, the Medium Spiritual Readings as well. If you put the Medium, it comes up me. It's a simple way of doing it. But I do have spiritual readings, which is where people who are interested in a reading that you can contact me through there. So you can contact me through any of these on Facebook. I also have a new Vu account, which is under DMedium, and Skype is also under DMedium. It just makes it easier for everyone to find me. So if you put that into any of these, you can usually find me, no problem. And if you have any questions of that, I'm always happy to answer any questions that you have about spiritualism, about your development, about what you experience or what you're going through. So has nobody got any questions? Uh, Gigi can yes, yeah, Gigi, her you cell phone. Oh. Gigi can ask in chat. Yes, Gigi, ask away. <laughs> She's wondering about a settlement. Is that your question or is that? That's Gigi. She, that she's wondering yeah. about a settlement. It is towards. It is towards to end, or it should it. Bleh, it should be. Will it come soon? The end. Sorry. Right. Okay. Uh, that's not a problem. Uh, there's a little bit of problems with this at the moment. It's not straightforward as it seems. Would that make sense to you? If you just type yes or no. I'm feeling this like. Okay, there's a little bit of a hitch. It's going to take longer than you actually want or you would expect. But if you hold in there, I do feel something will come. But it's not going to be as soon as you would like it to be. So I would just say, hold on. And I feel this is just a little hitch. There's paperwork that's got to be done with the situation as well. Would you understand that? I feel getting paperwork done is going to make it go through quicker. So you need to get that done as soon as possible. That will help. And I feel that there's going to be documentation that you might have to prove things or come up with ways of like giving them information. As I say, the sooner you do that, I think it will actually make a difference and it will get through. But it's not going to be as quick as you would like or as quick as you would expect. So if you've been told it's going to take a while, it's so, so long, say like said it's going to take six months, whatever, it's going to take longer than you actually expect. You're just going to have to wait in there, but it will come through. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what it'll be exactly what you want, but it will be something. So just hold on there, but you're going to have to wait a little bit longer. But you need to get that paperwork in. The longer you delay the paperwork and the information that they want, and I know it's kind of awkward and it's really big hassle. It's kind of not easy to give them the documentation. But if you can do that, the sooner you can do it, the sooner things will get processed. Does that help you at all? She said thank you. Yes, it does. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, so as everybody can see, Dee is also willing to answer questions. So she'll give you a little mini, mini well, I meeting. Actually, I was actually going to talk about Dark Knight of the Soul if nobody was going to ask any questions. Yeah, that's that's one I want to hear very much about. 
people might be actually interested and I don't know, it was just a kind of came into my mind, so I presume somebody in the room this is relevant for because I don't come up with things just randomly. Um Oh, you're very welcome, Gigi. But it's not usually something comes to my mind unless there's a reason behind it. I normally start talking about things and people say to me, oh, God, that's really going on in my life at this moment. And for some reason, I kind of got the impression of talking about Dark Knight of the Soul. Uh, for people who don't know that what that is, a lot more people have been going through Dark Knight of the Soul than ever before. And it's a really bad time. Now, it's called Dark Knight of the Soul, but it doesn't always happen overnight. It can actually last a lot longer. It's actually based on the idea that the Buddha, the original Buddha, Siddhartha, sat under a tree to find enlightenment. And he sat under the tree, some say it was for six months, some say it was six years. It depends on who you're reading. And he actually sat under the tree for, uh, to find enlightenment and eat one grain of rice per day. And eventually he turned around and says, right, okay, I've been sitting here for a long time. I've not found enlightenment. I'll give it one more night and then that's it. And on the very last night, he fought demons. And after that night of fighting demons, he woke up, he found enlightenment. So often it's associated with finding enlightenment, but it's not an easy process to go through. It's a very, very dark time. It seems to be, and sometimes it can even last up to seven years. Sometimes it can be less, but I've known people last up to seven years with Dark Night of the Soul. It's a very bleak time. Even though you've got loved ones around you and there's people that care about you and you have friends, you feel very, very lonely. Nobody understands what you're actually going through. Even yourself, it's a time when you feel you're going slightly crazy, where you feel like there's nothing left to live for. Your whole life seems to be destroyed. Everything just seems to be troubles. problems. There's nothing positive that you can see. You can see no way out of it. There's no light at the end of the tunnel. It's just a dark, bleak time. Often it affects your health. It can be depression. It can be illness. It can make you feel drained and tired all the time. It's very, very negative time in your life. And nothing can seem to get you out of this. And it goes on for, as I say, various people have various times. But it's on the process to enlightenment. And really there's not much you can actually do during this time to help to get through it. There's only very few things that can help. And it doesn't really make it a lot easier, but it does help. A lot of it's holding on to the aspect that you're going for enlightenment. So some people find enlightenment this way, but not everyone goes through this to find enlightenment. It's only certain people that experience this. But then say more have done lately. And again, it goes through the higher vibration. It's very similar to this to get through it. Music, keeping away from negative people and situations, watching your diet, exercising, being around people that are positive towards you, uplifting to you, people that you love. Find your passion, what you love. Liking yourself, loving yourself. Try to find positive in every negative situation. Learn to laugh at yourself. Uh, I can't remember if I actually said music, but music's very, very important as well. It can help you through this period of time. Drinking plenty of water. It might seem a bit irrelevant, but drinking plenty of water. Meditation. Staying very grounded and helping to clear the mind. Meditation is very, very important at this time. Soul searching is very, very important at this time as well. So these are things that can actually help you through the dark night of the soul. But really, it's a bleak time and you have to experience it and go through it for a reason. But at the end of it, it's enlightenment. So if you're starting to go through this time where nothing seems to be going right in your life, everything bleak and dismal, you can't see an end to it. And even sometimes you might have silly thoughts. Sometimes you have the thought of what's the point of being here? It would be better off if I wasn't around. You don't feel anyone appreciates you. You don't appreciate yourself. You can be very negative on yourself. And remember, no one has the right to put you down, not even yourself. And often during this time, we're very critical of ourselves. We're very down on ourselves. And we have to stop doing that as well. Hold on to the fact of enlightenment. What your aim is and what you're going for is enlightenment at the end of it. And if you can hold on to that and you get through it, you will find enlightenment at the end of it. And when you reach that, then to know you will never go through that night of the soul again. Once you've actually reached enlightenment, it will never happen again. Okay. Oh, Donna, you can understand this. Right. Actually, can I come to you, please? Because if this is for you, if I can come to you, would you mind? Yeah, I agree. I think there are so many people 
that are going through this at this time. Yeah, there's more than ever before. It's occasionally and, before, but and, and now Donna more says, than ever. Yes. Donna says yes, that's okay. Okay, if you could just answer. There's a lot of situations, especially with family around you at the moment. There's a lot of problems, and it's like it's not just coming from outside. It's coming from within the family as well. You've actually had your heart broken. It's like I don't feel it's necessarily intentional, but you're very sensitive at this time as well. You're really sensitive, and everything that everyone's saying and doing is really getting to you at this moment. You're also very emotional. I feel a lot of tears with you. It's kind of like... You're very down, and then you'll go off and just cry on your own. Would this make sense to you? Okay, right. You've been in bad places before. You've been down before, but it's never been as bad as this. This is the worst you've ever experienced. But you've been looking for something more in your life. You know that, say, within your side yourself, there's something more, something bigger out there that you're meant to be doing. Would this make sense to you? It's like you don't know what it is, you're not sure, you just have this feeling. All right, and look, as well with that, you've been kind of soul searching. Really, who am I? What am I? And it's kind of what I was mentioning before. It's like your mother, your daughter, your wife, but you're not yourself, and you've never been yourself for so long. And you've not really found laughter. It's like you laugh and you smile, but you're not really laughing. You've never really been to the point where you've been doubled over, crying with laughter with your stomach hurts for years. You've never really had that laughter. Would this make sense? If you can just answer yes or no, it just kind of helps the energy. Okay. I want to say to you, it's not long now. You've been going through this for a while, and I feel it's been years. It's not like being days, weeks, or months. And I did say this earlier, but this has been kind of long term. It's been going on for a long while now, and I'm feeling we're going years with this. Would that be correct? I feel you're actually starting to come to the end of it. And with this, I don't know, you need to hang on for at least another six months to a year, but it's going to start to come out of this. So I just want to say to you, hold on for a little bit longer. And in this time, you need to really soul search because you're trying to avoid it because you don't like the situation around you. You don't like the predicament you're in. You don't like what's going on around you. You don't like yourself at this moment. And I want to say you can't really truly be loved until you love yourself. But you're not feeling loved. You don't feel like everyone's disrespecting you. No one listens to you. No one's taking you seriously. And it's like, oh, God, she's off again. Oh, no, she's just going through one of her moods. And they're dismissing what you're going through. It's because they don't understand. And this is a big thing. This is major. And they just don't understand. And that's why they're being the way, because they don't know how to deal with it. And this happens in a lot of the situation. Others around you don't know how to deal with it. And so they handle the situation wrong. They become flippant. They become kind of dismissive of it. Oh, God, get a grip. Just get out of it. You can go over it. That kind of thing. Would you understand this? <coughs> and you can't do it. You can't get out of it that easily. It doesn't happen. But I'm starting to see a change come within the next six months. The flame's starting to come within the next six months, so it's going to start to improve. It's going to start to get better. Sorry, one second. Can you understand someone in spirit that has problems with the throat before they pass? I wasn't actually going this direction, but this is where they're taking me. <coughs> okay, you can understand someone, right, because they're coming in. Because I feel spirits very much with you. I'm sorry, they're taking my throat away. <coughs> one second. <coughs> oh. So they would have had problems. <clears throat> yeah, it's to do with the condition. It's not actually me. It's the condition of the person in spirit. Would you understand this? The kind of cough and that that I've got? Because I, I usually know it's me. Okay, right, because they're bringing that condition in. You know who this is. They're coming in very close. I, I'm not sure if it's, this is the same, wait, but there's a lady in spirit that you're connected to. I'm not sure if it's the same one with the condition or a different one. Oh, yeah, I agree with that, Brian. Only understand that night of the soul if you've been there. No one understands it unless you've experienced it. Is this a different person that's coming in with a throat condition or the lady? Is it did the lady have the throat condition or is it someone else that's coming in that was separate from the throat condition? I possibly have two coming in here. Because there's a lady, she says, you speak to her. You still speak to her. I feel she was very close to you. I'm not sure whether it's a mother or a grandmother. So it was like a grandmother who was like a mother or a mother. Along those lines coming in, okay, this lady's coming in very close. And she's saying, I still listen to you because you talk to her. You tell her things. She says, you cry. 
you sit down and you cry and you speak and you're like, I wish she was still here. I wish she was still with me. Why aren't you here? I need somebody at this moment. It's almost like you're saying, somebody, please help me. Anybody, help me. I don't know what to do. Help me to get through this. Would you understand this? She's with you. She hears you. She says she hears you. She hears prayers. She's with you and listening to you. And then you know the times when you fell down and you felt like you could never get up again? Not literally, symbolically. There been times when you've been so weighed down, so heavy, you didn't think you could get up in the morning. You didn't think you could get on. And suddenly you found that, you found that ability to be able to move on. You found that ability, that strength to get out of bed in that morning. You found the ability to get through that day. This lady was there. Because this lady was very strong. She was a very strong lady. She says, I've seen that way. She says, but I wasn't always strong. She says, people thought I was because she had to deal with what she went through. But she's coming in to give you support. And she says, I'm still with you. I'm still with you. I'm holding you up. I'm helping you through this. You're not alone. You're not walking through this alone. You haven't been alone because she's been with you. You feel this lady. You get either tingling or shiver feeling, like goosebumps or that. Would you understand that? That's when this lady's with you because you doubt yourself. You doubt when she's actually with you. You sometimes think, are you there? Or I think I feel you, but then you doubt yourself. When you get that tingling, that f feeling, that's her with you. She's always been there. She hasn't left you, okay? Because you felt she'd left you. You knew you had to move on. You knew she was ill. You knew that she was in pain. You didn't want her to suffer. You didn't want her to leave. But she says, I never left you. I was always with you. I've always been there. And I would never leave you. You know I would never leave you. You understand this? Okay. She just wants to say she's going to take you by the hand and lead you through the next six months. I'm not saying it's going to be perfect and over, but in six months you're going to start to see a change. You're going to start to see the light come in. You're going to start seeing things a little bit more positive. Just hold on there. And remember, at the end of it is enlightenment. When you reach enlightenment, you're able to see things a lot clearer. And you know something? She's telling me you're going to be able to laugh again. You're going to be able to really, really laugh again. You're going to be able to start enjoying life again. You just need to hold on for a little bit longer. As I say, six months, there's a little bit of a change coming in. And as it goes on from that, there's going to be more of a change coming in. So you're near the end of it. I just want to say you're near the end of it, my friend. You're near the end of it. Just keep going. Just keep going. And just know that this lady is with you. She's bringing so much love. And she's holding you up at this time. She's been holding you up for a long while. But she says, now I'm going to take you by the hand and I'm going to lead you. I'm going to take you to into the light. Not into the light as in past over. That doesn't sound right. She's going to take you to the light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> she's going to take you out of the darkness and into the light out of the darkness. She's going to help you through this. I'm sorry, that sounded bad for this it originally. <laughs> it doesn't mean to say you're going to die. It's just she's taking you out of this darkness that you've been going through. Right. It wasn't meant the other way. It was just meaning the light at the end of the tunnel. She's going to take you towards that. She's going to hold the light and lead you the way so that you're going to get through this. And you will once again be able to laugh. You'll once again be able to live. You'll once again be able to feel like a person and feel like it's worth living. And I want you to leave you with that and the love of this lady. Uh, as I say, I do apologise. It may have come out wrong, but it wasn't meant to come out that way. <laughs> when, as I said, as I say, when it means coming out the end of the light, it means the light's coming towards you. There's light at the end of the tunnel. And it's just there. Just hold on a bit longer. Yeah, the more you can laugh, the better. Just be around people that you love. And try and laugh as much as possible. And you know something as well? Let the tears come, right? Tears are cleansing. It's not a bad thing. Tears are cleansing. Don't hold them back. Don't try and stop it. Let the tears come and let yourself be cleansed. But you need to seriously look within yourself. That's the biggest thing. If you are able to look within yourself and find who you are and find your inner child, the person you used to be, the donna, not the wife, not the mother, the donna that you've always been, that inner child, and let them out. That will make it easier and that will help you to get there quicker. It will help you to get through this a lot easier and it will make a difference as well. So just sit down and decide, what do you want? You need to make changes in your life. You understand this, Donna? 
I was going to stop, but they didn't stop. You need to make changes, and you're holding yourself back from making these changes. And again, as I say, everything's connected. You're scared. You're scared of making the changes. You're scared of what's going to happen. You're scared of hurting other people. Can I say to you, your instinct is the very first thing that you get because you can't argue with yourself and you're arguing with yourself what you feel you should do and what you should, what you are doing because the first instinct is what you're meant to do. That is your instinct. That's telling you what you need to do. When you start to get the other things coming in, like, oh, it's what other people have told you. It's what other people have conditioned you to believe. It's about the way you've been brought up, the environment, about what the law, what the government, what everybody else says, what your family says, what your friends say, what the newspaper says. It's all outside of that. The first thought in your mind is what you need to do. That is your instinct talking to you. Anything else after that, anything that you're arguing about that, dissuading yourself from, is actually outside influences. You cannot literally argue with yourself and you're doing that because you're listening to what you've been brought up with. You're listening to what you've been told. You're listening to what other people have put down as rules and regulations. You're listening to about other people's judgments of what you would do. So if you did a situation, then people are going to judge you. People are going to say this. You're going to do that. You're going to hurt others. You're thinking about others. You're not following your instincts. You need to listen to your instincts. Your instincts are very, very strong and you're ignoring them. The more you listen to them, the stronger they get. The very first thought you get, because you know what your first thought is. You know what you need to do. You know what is right for you and you're stopping yourself. You're trying to dissuade yourself from doing what you feel is right. Would you understand this? You need to stop that. You need to do what makes you happy. You need to do what's best for you. And I want to say that if you're going to do what's best for you to make you happy, sometimes you hurt others on the way, right? And that's partly what's stopping you because you're scared of hurting others. As long as you do not intentionally go out to harm or hurt anybody else and you are doing it for your benefit, best to make you happy, then it's not wrong. It's only wrong if you deliberately go out to hurt others to get what makes you feel happy, to make what's, what's best for you to make you feel happy. If you deliberately hurt somebody along the way, that is wrong. If you do it with the right intentions and the right reasons and you do not intentionally harm or hurt another person, then it's not wrong. You understand why I'm saying that? You need to do what makes you happy as long as you're not intentionally hurting others. And if someone loves you and cares about you, they'll want you to be happy. They might not like the process. They might not like what's going through. But at the end of it, if you're happy, they should be glad that you've got there, that you are happy at the end of it. Yeah, I agree with that, darling. Don't be afraid. Do what you need to to make you happy because you're not. And that, again, will go towards the process of help you get through this because you've been going through it so long because you've been holding back, because you're not listening to instincts, because you've not made the changes that you needed to make. So the process has gone on longer than it should have done. You should have probably been out of the dark night of the soul by now. But because you've been holding back and you've been trying to avoid the situation, it hasn't happened. You need to face it and do what's best for you. And hopefully this will help. And Donna, if you ever want to talk, um, I have opened the door. Um, I truly do understand that because it, you know, for a long time, even though I was, you know, knew it was for my own good and I am, you know, I needed to listen to my instincts. I didn't, um, because, you know, oh, I need to do this for so and so and I need to do this for so and so. But, you know, what about me? Um, so once I started standing up and putting my feet firmly on the ground and started thinking more about myself, too, things did start to change, and they started to change for the better. So, uh, but if you ever want to talk, you know where I'm at. We're friends on Facebook, and uh, we could talk about that. Sometimes it's looking at things from a different perspective. Now you know that you're arguing, you, get, you, you can't argue with yourself. 
the fact that before you were thought you were arguing, you were debating, but now you know you can't argue with yourself. Your first instinct is what you need to do, what's best for you. It changes your perspective. And also the fact that if you do something for your own benefit, as long as you do not intentionally harm others, it's okay. It will not go against you. It's not going to be karma that's going to come back on you because you're doing what you need to to make you happy. As long as you're not deliberately harming others, that makes a difference. And that can help you to make the right decision for you. But at the end of the day, you have to do what you feel is right for you. But I also want to say to you, things aren't going to change in the next five, ten years unless you make changes. And you know that. It's not going to change in the next five, ten years. It's going to be roughly the same situation until you make the changes in your life. And you know that. So you either stay and you stay in the same situation and you carry on and you accept the way your life is. Or you do the changes. I'm sorry, I'm kind of, <laughs> I do apologise, I'm kind of a realist and very direct. I, I always have been kind of, there's no point in beating about the bush. But She's a sweet bully. <laughs> it's realistic, you can't, I mean, people try to sugarcoat things and that, but sometimes we need to know the truth, we need to hear it said. Because we know these things and it's confirmation, because it's kind of confirmation. What I just said to you a minute ago was confirmation. Yeah, exactly. I'm the same way. I don't feel there's any, you know, reason to sugarcoat it. Um, you know, and if you don't do something about it, you will be stuck. It's up to you to get unstuck. And I get, I know this from personal experience as well. Yes. Sometimes we have to make hard decisions and sometimes we hurt people, but as long as we don't intentional, we have to do what's best for us. Well, I think your way of getting unstuck, Donna, was coming to this show and the connection that the lady who came through to D that came to you, I think that is your, uh, the firecracker that's just been made, put under your tuchus and made you have to move it or you're going to explode your bum. And the other thing I'd like to say as well, if this is recorded, I would listen back to it again afterwards. When you get a chance... Yeah, it's, uh, it's on the archives. Go back and listen to it, because often going back and listening to it, you can actually, when you've got time to process it properly, sometimes you can pick up things that you didn't realise the first time. Things sometimes hit home more. So once this is in archives, I would suggest going exactly. back and listen to it. It should be into archives by tomorrow morning. Even Maybe if it's something, tonight, but, yeah. because sometimes it's like we don't have time to process it, we don't really think, or it doesn't really take in. So mm -hmm. listening to it afterwards can be very good. But I'm going to leave you with that just now, and hopefully it's given you something. But you need to think about this situation and need to think about what I've said. And that's your decision, but you need to think about what I've actually said today and then come to your own decision. And then at the end of it, you've made your decision knowing the whole fact as you've seen it from different perspective. And sometimes that's what makes a difference. But some of it's just been confirmation of what you already know. But I relieved you with that. And this lady is very much with you. She's on about a photograph. You understand the photograph of this lady? It would be an older photograph. Okay. She's just mentioning she knows about the photograph. I'm not sure exactly why, but she's just mentioning that she knows about the photograph. Because I feel it's very personal to you. It's one that you would maybe look at a lot. John, okay. She just knows. She says, because every time you look at the photograph, she's with you. So every time you look there, she's with you. And you don't doubt it anymore. Okay. And with that, I'm definitely going to close. <laughs> That was beautiful. That was beautiful. Now, if anybody else has any questions, please pipe up, chime in, uh, mic up, uh, whichever. Uh, D, sweetie, um, take another sip of water. You're doing really good. Love you dearly. Are you drawn to any? Water, but never mind. <laughs> I, excuse me, what is that, Jen? Don't even get started, that girl. It's wine, actually, but hey, nothing wrong with that. As long as it's not gin. Then no, it's not gin. Gin, it's just a, a drop of wine. 
So I'm not drunk though, so don't worry about it. I actually had Sunday the other day, and I think the thought I was actually drunk, but it was like, no, I'm just like this normally. <laughs> very true, very true. Uh, yeah, well, if you know me, you know what I'm like. I'm kind of bouncy. Actually, people used to think that. They used to think I was drunk when I was sober. It was like, oh, yeah, when you're so- <laughs> yeah, I used to get accused of it all the time. They'd go to me and say, "Are you drunk?" And I'm like, "No, I'm so cold sober." <laughs> right. You just have, you have a lot of loving energy. I just mm-hmm. I love it. Mm-hmm. I love it. Dee is always positive and she's always got so much energy. And I always well, make we, you laugh. Yes, she <laughs> Very does. True. She always Can makes you? me laugh. <laughs> um Dee, since we have about a half an hour left, do you see yep. anybody in the chat room that you're drawn to? Uh right, okay. In then. my you know, Wait a minute, I've got to look here, right? It's not okay, some sit forward, my, my darling, and lower the glasses. Yeah, it's got to. I was looking at my glasses earlier on, my reading glasses, I couldn't see whether I think I need them tested. Well, I'm sorry, Mary, but you're not getting any reading. <laughs> hey, <laughs> poor Mary. She can get a reading any time, so she's okay. Uh, all right, wait a minute, give me a second. Uh, just talk for a second while I'm still. Okay. Diane Jane, I have thoroughly enjoyed listening and learning that I was truly was not going nuts. No, baby girl, you are not going nuts. Thank you so much for the confirmation and extra information. Right, Very actually, cool. Brian Clover. Uh-oh. Are you there, please? Uh-oh. <laughs> What's the O-O for? Go oh, ahead, Brian. I'm only joking. Brian, where are you at? Brian, anytime. Brian. <laughs> Unmute yourself. <laughs> I was here. I was here. I was going to show you that. Just sitting here oh, listening to, on, to words of wisdom. You were on camera earlier on, weren't you? Yeah. Ah, right. Okay. I don't know. I kept getting drawn to you. There's a gentleman coming in from Spirit, and this is like an old gentleman. I feel like with a flat cap. Possibly was like his hair was thinning or losing his hair before he passed. It would have been, I feel we're probably going back grandfather, father, grandfather, uh, link. Yes. Okay, he's coming in very so. He's actually quite a jolly soul. He was very kind of laid back and, you know, he, he knew what he knew. <laughs> he wasn't the most intelligent man, but he knew what he knew. He knew a lot about life. But he was a fairly pleasant soul. He was very, as I say, I can't want to say he's just kind of laid back and he's coming in forward and he's talking about a situation where you need to be in the same, you need to do the same. You need to take a step back and just be a bit more laid back about something. Oh, that's hard. <laughs> do you understand the situation? Do you understand what he's talking about though? Yes. <laughs> okay. He says you just need to be a little bit more laid back like he was. Yeah, I know it's a bit more difficult. Don't feed the medium. I feel you should know that. You shouldn't feed the medium. For some reason, I feel you should know that. (laughs) But actually, mediums are the worst ones for doing it. But he's coming in. And he's actually, I I just feel such a light, really, really good vibration with this man. It's kind of like bouncy and this, that, and the other. But he'd had a hard life. He said it wasn't easy. And I feel family was important to him as well. He's saying family was very important to him. But he had a serious side as well. He was his usual about things, but if there was something that got to him, he would say what he needed to say. And again, this is relevant to you. You're needing to speak out. I understand, yeah. Okay. I love the voice. It sounds very kind of <laughs> the way you say that's kind of like a bit dubious, but like and a bit doubtful. But it's like you need to speak and I feel it's for your own self. Because often I don't feel you actually hold back in what you want to say. I don't feel you're that kind of person. I feel you normally are very outspoken about things, but this is kind of like where I'm feeling you're holding back a little bit. Would that no, make sense? I'm... Yeah, I'm very, very quiet, to be quite honest. I don't, uh, I don't interrupt. Uh, I just um, plod on doing my thing and take the insults that Mama keeps throwing at me. Yeah. I feel if you get pissed all the time, it's like him. You would, have, you get to a point where you will say what you feel. Yes. No. Right. Okay. Right. right. Okay. As long as you can understand it that way. Right. Because this is a time when you need to say. This is a time when you need to speak out. You need to do that for yourself at this particular moment. I'm in a difficult position, to be quite honest, Dee. Um, my 
uh, gifts are totally different to everybody else's and to try and get it through to people uh, once they find out what I can do they tend to be very frightened of me and they won't come back <laughs> so. Right, I can kind of understand or relate to that but then again maybe they're not ready for what you've got to give them your gifts and abilities they're not right because it's like telling people information they can understand at that level and at certain level like even with gifts and abilities for example I do trans transfiguration it's not for everybody that scares some people they back mm -hmm. away from me because of it but that's because they're not ready for that doesn't mean to say I'd stop doing it doesn't stop me telling people if they're not ready for it not comfortable then they don't have to come to me for that. They stay away from that aspect of it. They can still come to me for other aspects. But if they don't feel comfortable with that, then that's fine. They're just yeah. not ready for that level. So it's okay for them not to be ready. But if you hold back and not telling people or hold back from doing what you're meant to, those that are meant to experience what you've got are going to be deprived. Because mm -hmm. what we're doing now is okay there's different levels of consciousness different levels of development different levels of understanding and there's certain ones that are on a higher level it's just kind of discerning who needs what at a certain time and i feel you can usually do that you know the ones that are new that wouldn't understand and the ones that are so when the ones that come to you that are ready for it then go for it and give it to if they're not ready for it then just hold back it doesn't matter if they're scared and they run off that's because they're not meant to be there they're not to be, to be around you. They're not ready for what you've got to give them. If they were ready for what you're meant to give them and what you're meant to do, then they would still be around. Remember, not everyone's going to be right for everyone. So, I mean, I can't help everyone in the world. There's certain people I can't help, but somebody else can. There's certain people that are not ready for what I'm able to give, but somebody else is more at their level. Like attracts like. Same vibration attracts vibration. Some people aren't going to be on your vibration. And that's fine because they've got to find the right person on the right vibration for them. Do you follow this? Yeah, I certainly do. Um, you know, many people... I can only ever do um, a reading on a one-on-one -on -one basis because I can't let everybody know what I'm thinking or what's going on. So I, I just have to sort of curtail all of my... Um, things, my, my readings, etc. Mm -hmm. And okay, it works. I, I help a, a myriad of people um, because of my age, uh, been there, done that, and mm -hmm. um, I find it's uh, it's it's very very um, what can you say rewarding for me. Yeah. Um, when I can, but um, as I say, it's it's just one of those things. I always feel as I'm a loner. I'm sort of wandering through the spiritual life. <laughs> very much alone often we feel like that though I mean uh, I find a lot of spiritual people aren't very spiritual and I find sometimes especially if you get a group sometimes there's a lot of and so often we are kind of loners but now at this particular time we're being drawn to certain people so we're actually finding whereas before we were alone we're being drawn to people who are like minded and like level and we're finding that certain people are coming to us Right, especially if we're more advanced in our knowledge and understanding, we're attracting those on the higher levels towards us. It's like we've kind of done our bit with the ones, and I don't mean to be disrespectful to anyone, but we've done the psychic, we've done the other stuff, we've helped the other ones. Now we're at a level of understanding and knowledge and abilities and gifts to help those on the same level or come up to the level that we're at. And there's new ones that are coming up behind us that can deal with what we used to deal with before. So there's ones that are coming up that they weren't there before that are able to deal with the people on the levels that we weren't, that we have dealt with before. They can deal with them now. So that leaves us time to focus on what we need to, to help the ones on the higher levels, to help the ones come up to our level of understanding, our understanding of knowledge. But everyone's different. There's no right or wrong to what we do. And you know that as much as I do. There's no right or wrong. It's what we're meant to do at that time. Is this making any sense to you at all? Oh, yeah, 100%. No, no problem there at all. Um, you get used to um, what you have to live with. And as I say, all I can continue to do is to help people as I go along. And 
have done every day for the last Lord knows how many years. <laughs> but people are now needing the higher level of knowledge, the higher understanding. They're needing the higher guidance. Before it wasn't the same amount of people, but now there are ones that are ready for it and it's not there. I mean, often people come to me and I'm only one step ahead of them. <laughs> like They're coming for information about things that we've just learned about. And I'm basically maybe one step ahead of them. Whereas before, it's like with the learning and knowledge, I was maybe a lot higher. But because things are changing, and remember that, everything is changing, right? There's the old way and the new way. And what's been happening since the higher vibration, everything is changing. Everything we've ever understood, everything we've ever known spiritually has changed completely. But I was, I was a thing you trained. I was trained within the spiritualist church. Everything I was ever taught in the spiritual church, everything I ever learned from the SNU, a lot of it doesn't exist anymore. It's completely changed. The parameters, the knowledge. For example, higher dimensional guides are coming in. We've always understood that guides work by the five senses, right? So it's like the five senses, that's how they communicate. Now we've got these high dimensional comes in that we've never had before. And this is using telepathy to communicate. We don't use the same senses. They don't use the senses. So when we're learning to communicate with them and connect to them, it's completely out there. It's like it took me ages to figure out how to communicate. I knew that they used telepathy, but it's a different way of communicating because you're still relying on the five senses. Because that's the way we've always worked. Use the five senses. Always. And we trusted them, relied on them. And now, especially with the higher dimensional guides coming in, we can't rely on that anymore. And nobody's never really worked with the higher dimensional guides before. Not to this level anyway. So now we're changing how we're working. Even the concept of what we've learned and what we knew, it's changed completely. As I say, I've been in mediumship for 20 years. I was taught old school. I understood about the changes, but even now, everything is changing. Some of the older type mediums, it's finding it hard to change over. And those that have been doing it for a long time are finding it hard to adjust to the new ways. And I feel that's what's going on with you is you're adjusting to the new ways. And it's confusing. It's a bit frightening. It's a bit out there. It's a bit weird. And you don't know what the hell you're doing sometimes. It's like, what the hell's going on here? And it's just finding you through it. But I think it's changed. Sorry, go on. The main thing is that uh, I don't want to hurt people. And some, I mean, I sitting here, I could tell you a few things about your past, which wouldn't be very pretty, because in front of everybody here, um, it, it will be embarrassing for you, which would hurt you. So I, I hold back and I only pick on the things that I actually know that will not hurt the person. And it's very, very difficult. And... Uh, because I always tend to zoom towards their, their problem area. Um, right, okay, that comes down to ethics and morals. There's some yeah. people that would come out with information like that in public. Being yeah. SNU trained in the spiritualist church, we do not bring up personal information in public. We bring up general information, but we never go into personal. If it's going to be personal, then we'd say, can I talk to you? So if you're in a public room like this, and you're giving out information, right? You would give out what information you can. If there's something that you can't come out personally and directly that could be embarrassing or you don't feel is right, and you have to judge that yourself. I usually say, if I wouldn't like it, then I wouldn't pass it on to someone else. You'd say to them, can I speak to you after we finish? Can you contact me later? We always take them to one side and then give them the information afterwards. But in public, we wouldn't do that. I've seen people that do that, and I'm sorry, it makes me cringe. I've actually mm -hmm. seen someone being very direct in the spiritualist church before, and I literally was cringing. I was embarrassed for the person. It was so personal. It was really, I don't even want to mention it. It was so personal. I was disgusted. We always said to, I've always been taught that we never bring it out in public. We take them to one side afterwards. If you can't give it directly to them at the time, you say, can you talk to me after the service? Can you talk to me afterwards? Can you contact me on this? And I'll finish the reading then. Yeah. Then I do it most of the time. As I say, most yeah. of my stuff is done is done um, on uh, um, Skype, um, which yeah. is a, only a one-to-one -one basis. So, <laughs> but, um, as I say, most people, <laughs> what, what do they need me to tell them what's in their mind? Because mm. they know what's in there anyway. So it, it, oh, it yeah, seems they're a bit... 
Uh huh. They already know the past. People are sometimes scared of coming up with the past because it's so bad. But they yeah. already know what they've been through and experienced. So to them, it's not in there. But I do agree, ethics and morals. You're like me. You wouldn't do it in public, and I totally I agree with that. But I feel I this new. Ha- we were talking about higher dimensional guides coming, and I feel you're actually starting to get the higher dimensional guides coming in as well. I don't know actually if you actually interacted with them. It might feel like there's just a new energy around you. But it's not using the five senses. It's using telepathy instead. Mm -hmm. And it's a different way of communicating. I don't know if you've noticed this yet or whether you've actually, if you haven't, it's going to be coming in. So I'm not sure if this is already coming to you at the moment or not. Well, telepathy, I've been doing that for the last five, seven years. Um, My other thing is uh, remote viewing. Um, You know, I can go anywhere in the world and have done (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and that can be a shade embarrassing at times as well. So uh, it, it's more a matter of um, am I learning? Am I, you know, really taking this in and you know, getting the full benefit? I, I shall find out eventually before I pop my clogs, no doubt. <laughs> I don't think we ever really know, to be honest. We just kind of wade our way through it and hope for the best majority of the time. A lot of it is sounding confident, like you know what you're actually talking about and what you're actually doing. But we never stop learning. But there is new high dimensional guides coming in for you, so just watch out if you've not met them. There's new ones coming in. You should feel a new vibration or a new communication coming in. With this can be the high dimensional guides. I don't know exactly on your beliefs on that, but it can be sometimes like dragons and unicorns. It's not always human forms that come in, but unicorns take you to the sixth dimension, which is like the celestial levels and things like that. So if you're getting likes of a unicorn coming in, and I know I was a bit kind of iffy at the first when I heard about unicorns, but until I actually met my unicorn, then I couldn't actually deny it. But they're actually very, it's ascended horses. And they work on the sixth, I think it's the sixth or seventh dimension to the ninth dimension. And they can actually take you to the celestial levels. So in answer to your question, are you actually developing? Are you actually doing this right? Are you actually on the right path? If you're getting like sort of higher dimensional guides coming in like the unicorn to take you to the celestial levels, you're doing something right. Thank you very much. <laughs> really do appreciate your comments. But, I mean, it's a bit weird if you get, like, when I say, like, the talk of unicorns and dragons and things like that, but when you think about high, uh, like, ascended horses, it's a little bit easier to actually associate with. And what happens as well is the unicorn's horns also for helping you with your chakras. Because once your crown chakra starts opening, you start working with the higher dimensional chakras, then it actually helps you to cleanse and balance the chakras out in the physical body and the higher dimensional ones as well. But the biggest thing is ask them to take you to celestial levels because you can get to the higher dimensions where we've never really been before. So when mm-hmm. these high dimensional guides come in, it's a really good experience. It's places you've never, ever been, never, ever experienced before or very few people actually have. So it's actually really, really good things to be able to see. Celestial levels, it's all gold. Everything is all golden. Clothes, everything is all golden. It's different from the spirit plane level. So it's a completely different a level, a different under, it's a different thing completely from what we've actually understood before. I've had spirit coming to me many, many times, um, mm. not to give me information, more a matter of um, my safety. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, they've stopped things from happening or stopped, you know, they stopped my van from starting one, which um, really uh, moved me away from a massive accident. So that sort of thing. To me, um, they've been with me all of my life. I mean, I learned healing when I was eight years old, and I've used that all the way through my life. But um, as I say, going any further, I tend to skirt around what everybody else is doing mm-hmm. and uh, just come up with my own little things now and again. And for no particular reason. I mean, it's not as though I've asked for any of it. Um, it just comes there, and that's it. So it's a strange life. <laughs> Well, they only bring it forward when we're ready for it. So, as I say, I would say to me that you've definitely been on the right path and you're still learning because I'm feeling that this is coming into you. Although it's up to you whether you accept it or not, but it's really an amazing experience to go into the celestial levels to be able to get up to the higher dimensions and be able to visit them there. Because you do astral travelling, don't you? You astral travel. Yes. Yeah. 
well, this is kind of going to the next levels of where you've already been with your astral traveling. It's like it's the, same as remote, it's the same as remote viewing. Um, yeah. There is virtually no difference at all. Uh, been there, done that many, 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 many times. I don't know. Um, massive course on transcendental meditation back in the early eighties, and uh, of course I can meditate to real depths. But um, you don't need to do that every day. It's just a moral matter of um, you know how to control your mind, so consequently you just go to your go to your level. So it, honestly, it's um, it's very confusing at times. <laughs> Yeah, I could understand that as I say, and a lot of new things are coming in, so it's even more confusing than it's ever been before. And say what I've ever, I've already learned and knew everything I've ever understood, and I think a lot within the SNU and everything else, it's completely changing. Because like a lot of people have left, like John Galloway left the SNU because it was like stuck in the past, and it's not really conforming to the new way. Although I think they're trying to catch up with it, but since like uh, 2014, the higher vibration has just knocked us all off. It's completely different from everybody it's like nobody really knows what we're doing as such it's actually easier for those that haven't done anything before because they're coming in with blank so they're only learning the the new way of doing it whereas people that have been doing it for many years like us is having to adapt to the new ways and changing what we know and as I say a lot of the older mediums are refusing to change they're not conforming or going with this new way that's coming in because it is so much different from what we've understood but just keep going where you're going and just trust at the moment, that's all we can do. <laughs> As you say, I'm just one step ahead of most other people, and I'm learning the hard way. They're coming to me, and I'm able to give them guidance and advice, but I've had to go and find out myself. There's not really anyone you can go to that's able to give me the information that I need. It's the only way I can find it is by actually going and experiencing it myself. Plus, I like to experience it myself, so it's, at least then I can tell people from a genuine point of what it's like, because I don't yeah. think you actually understand unless you've experienced it. No, that's it, exactly. But once you've been there and done that, you can actually pass on that help, you know. But um, there's so many things that uh, I haven't even touched on, to be quite honest. And as you said, I'm learning every day, even at my age. So, And I'm a bloody sight older than you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. I've still got a lot to learn. I'm still a novice as far as it comes to things. I know that completely. The more we learn, the less we actually realise we know. I figured that one out a long time ago. You yeah. answer one question, you get ten more. Yeah, thank you very much for your reading anyway, uh, Dee. I do appreciate it. You're welcome. Right, so, any questions, anybody? Yes, I have one. Go on. Okay, uh, first, first a comment here, okay? Um, the way I see the, how I know Brian... And what you were saying is you were so spot on, but Brian needs to get out of his own way. Sometimes he puts himself, he puts his, I want it, he wants to do it one way and, and somebody else wants it the other way, but he can do it the other way, but he's kind of nervous to do it. So, you know, he just needs to sort of get out of his own way and trust in himself because, excuse me, Brian, I would not have asked you to be a co-host on this show if I didn't think you could do it. Even though you are an old fart, I do love you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, all right. Fair enough. No, okay. I, got told, I got told the other day that uh, I am um, psychic, which I am, I know. I've never used the psychic side of me. I just use the, uh, to, you know, the telepathic side. So. Hold on a minute. You actually are psychic and you do use it. You just don't realize that you've been using it because you've been using it your whole life. It's natural yes. to you. So you haven't got a clue of the difference between not being psychic and being psychic because you've always done it. So to you, it's as natural as day. So to you, you've never used it before. That's the one. Yeah. <laughs> it's like people say, oh, clairvoyance or that. It's like if you close your eyes and see pictures or colours, right? That's the beginning of clairvoyance. So if you close your eyes, it, most people don't see anything. So if you say to that, it's like, I've always seen pictures with my eyes closed. I've always seen colours. They think it's their imagination or that. It's actually the start of clairvoyance. So because yeah. it's natural to them, they don't realise it's actually clairvoyance. So they walk about and start developing. I want to be clairvoyant. Oh, I'd love to be clairvoyant. 
and nobody explains to them about clairvoyance, how you actually start off is with your eyes closed and seeing colours or pictures. And once they actually learn that, it's like, well, I've been doing that for life, all my life. Oh, that it. And they, then they go, well, I've been doing that. Why didn't you tell me that before? But sometimes it's a natural gift ability. We do it all our lives. And so we don't realise we've been actually doing these things. Like being empathic. Some people connect in spirit. It's been natural all their lives. Some people have just been natural psychics all their lives. But it's natural to them to know who's on the who's actually phoning before you answer the uh, answer the phone to actually think about somebody and then them appear silly things like that they've always done it and never thought twice about it and thought everybody else could do it knowing what somebody else is thinking before they actually see it or saying things at the same time it's so natural they've always done it they don't realize that's a psychic ability so often it's a lack of knowledge that causes people to really not know. I mean, I've had people who meditate and they've been saying, I don't know how to meditate. I don't know how to meditate. And you explain it to them because no one explains these things. And once you explain to them about meditation, it's like, well, I've been doing that for years, naturally. Mm-hmm. Same about clairvoyance. You explain it to them and they'll say, oh, my God, I've been doing that for years and didn't realise. See, I used to read my mother, I used to read my mother uh, even when I was eight to ten years old because I could walk in and I knew exactly what she was thinking. And it was mm-hmm. wrong, more a matter of turn around and rush out the door again or rush past her and go out my mm-hmm. bedroom window. Um, <laughs> you know, I've been doing it all the time, but just didn't realise it. I thought everybody was exactly the same. So it is, you're, you know, mm-hmm. it is difficult. You're clairsentient as well, aren't you, Brian? You feel the energy. You can feel if someone's happy, sad. You can walk in a room and know whether there's yes. been an argument. You've also been that as well for most of your life as being clairsentient. It's actually one of the best abilities to have. Clairsentience is one of the best gifts and abilities to have. Hardest one to learn and to understand and control, but it's actually one of the best ones you can have. Yeah, it's, uh, I don't go after anything else. I don't chase anything. I just wait for things to come to me, to be honest. I just think, well, I'm learning every day. Uh, I'll leave it at that. (laughs) Well, the biggest thing I find is people say, oh, I'd love to be a natural born medium. I would love to be able to do it naturally, but they don't actually understand the concept of it. Well, we're all born psychic. We're all basically spirits. So it's generally communicating with yourself when you're talking to spirit. The thing is often about the school age, we close down because you've got friends, you've got learning to new things, you've got birthday parties. So you kind of close down. Often again, some people, people open when they go through puberty and then they close down again and they might open up again and they close down. Basically what we know or understand, like before it used to be natural born where some had a gift and ability and some didn't. But what we understand now is everyone has the gift and ability and everyone can do it and become any aspect you want as long as you put the time, effort and energy into it. So what happens is when it's not a natural born, we just don't close down. And people think, oh, it would be so much easier. But what they don't understand is we live with all our lives. So, I mean, I used to see people coming out walls when I was 12. Between 12 and 14, I hid under my bed covers. I thought I had nightmares. I would watch people walk out my walls. I would see heads coming through. It scared the bejesus out of me. <laughs> and I'm being polite there. <laughs> 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 you can't say scared. You can't say scared. We don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even warn me before about that. But it scared the bejesus out of me. Seriously, I was petrified for years. Always was something in my hallway. Scared the hell out of me. I didn't know how to control it. I didn't know how to close it down. I didn't know how to stop it. And yet, right, so when you start developing, it wasn't to open up. For me, it was to close down. That's what yeah. I went to learn. I needed to learn to close down. I needed to learn to control it. Once I was able to close down and control it, oh, my God, my life was so much better. Because you have it in the background all the time. It doesn't leave you. It's there constantly. It's like the TV being on constantly. And it can be sometimes there's volumes blaring, screaming at you, and you can't turn it down. It's deafening. And other times it's in the background, but you can always still hear it. And that's what it was like with spirit with me, with my gifts and abilities. I knew somebody hated me, even though they didn't say it or do anything. And I used to think I was delusional. How could I? Nobody said anything, but I knew it. So it was always there in the background, and I had to learn to close it down. But someone who's not, who closes and opens or decides to open up at an older age, they're opening up, and it's easier for them to close down. So believe me, folks, being a natural born is not what you think it is. It is not as good as you think it is. 
it is not the best thing because you've got the ability, you learn, it needs to take you a while to open up, but you've got the ability to close down again. When you're natural born, if you don't know how to close down, it can be scary as hell. It can it be is. really traumatic. Especially going into a shopping centre, and all you can hear is everybody else's thoughts. Oh, when you yeah. Gradually, when you gradually learn to turn that off, it's, it's like, um, I used to think of it as a, a silk blanket. You know, because it was so silky and smooth after that, it was just beyond belief. It's well, weird. you can get a form of agoraphobia, because if you're outside and you open up and there's a hundred people, you're getting all their emotions. I mean, I'm class sentient. I would pick up their emotions. So I'd be yeah. feeling angry one second, I'd be wanting to cry the next, I'd be depressed, all hit me at once. Hundred people with all these emotions hitting you. Hundred people's physical pains, arms, like people with problems with legs, people with heart conditions. You'd be physically, literally feeling the pain. So you're overwhelmed with all these thoughts, all these emotions, all these feelings, all these pains. It's You need to become reclusive. You don't want to go out in public. Mm-hmm. I oh, know, I've been there, done that. <laughs> but I mean, so many people say it's a good thing to be natural. I'm sorry, it's not a good thing to be natural born. <laughs> if you're actually a natural born, then you probably would say you wish you wouldn't be one. But once you're able to control it, it's different. It's amazing when you co- were able to control it and you're able to close down. That is such a big thing. I mean, I wasn't until my late 20s before I was able to close down. But, I mean, I have this thing about my hallway, because every house I've ever known all my life, there's been somebody in my hallway used to scare the hell at me, because I didn't know who it was or what it was, but I knew there was somebody in my hallway. And then eventually, when I started to learn, it was like I banned them from the hallway. <laughs> it was like, okay, you can come in the house, but you're not coming in the hallway. <laughs> now, we all, we all have to learn as we go, though. This, I think this is the beautiful part about spiritualism, you know, it's... Uh, there's no, as I said to everybody, they, they say to me, you know, well, I read in this book that such and such and you must do this. And I said, look, everything that's in a book is somebody else's thoughts. Yeah. There is no proof. You've got to do your own thing. You've got to play your own pipe in the band, you know. You know, so you just carry on with what, exactly what you can do. Um, well, no two people yeah. work exactly the same. There's no two because we're all individuals. We all think differently. So people come to me and say, okay, I read this book and this is how they tell you to do clairvoyance. I read this book and this is how they tell me to do clairvoyance. Which one's right? Well, <laughs> neither's right and neither's wrong. The simple thing is you take what feels right to you. And that comes with life as well as with spiritualism. You get information and if it feels right, it makes sense. It's logic and common sense. It's right for you. You take it. it Negative feelings, anger, frustration, it doesn't feel right, it doesn't make sense, it's not logical, it's not for you. So you take the bits that make sense and they're positive to you and you reject the things that are negative. And that's how you become the medium or whatever that you need. And that works with life as well as with spiritualism. But if you're looking at that, it's so confusing, so much information out there. You take out what's positive, what's right and makes sense, and you get rid of what doesn't. If it doesn't feel right, if it's negative emotions, it's not right for you. And that's how you find how you weigh. That's what you find is right for you. And it doesn't matter if somebody else does it differently. That is not relevant. Everybody works differently. The closest you'll get is people with the same mentor. But even with the same mentor, everyone works differently. You find your own way. Still, thank you very much for your time, my love. I'll give you back to Darlene now because uh, I'm sure she'll be jumping up and down and chewing at the bit and so on and so forth. God bless you. Have a really, really good day. Thank you for the conversation at the end. It was more of a conversation towards the end rather than the reading. <laughs> but that's okay because you know what? I bet you there's ten, 10 to 1. There's somebody who learned something out of it. If they're not in the chat room, they will get it in the archives. Exactly. Yeah. Um, this is this has been an amazing, amazing show, and you do realize, my darling, that you will be back. <laughs> yeah, this has been awesome. It's, it's not even an option. Okay. You are coming back. We're going to give you the break for the rest of the year. And, oh, yeah. See, even Gigi's going, yep, hope so. It's not hoping. <laughs> she is. I have, yeah. I have written it down in the New Year calendar. D is back. And Darlene's psychic, so she can predict it. Plus, it's for sure. Darlene's not psychic, she's just a bully. 
<laughs> All right, it's time to wrap it up, folks. It is. Hey, thank you so much. Thank you, Sugar. You have been a blessing. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for putting up for me as well. Put up with me as well. Well, we started out with an awesome, an awesome chat room, and slowly everybody had to go to bed. But mm. I'll bet you 10 to 1 for the ones that missed the end of it, they're going to go back in the archives and give it a listen. Thank you, Dee, very much. Thank you, Brian, for being here with us once again. Jennifer, awesome guest. I don't know where you found her, but she really, really <laughs> rocks. <laughs> Everybody in the chat room, Carrie, DJ, <clears throat> by the way, that would be me on my second <laughs> computer, just hoping I don't crash. Uh, Diane, Jane, Gigi, and Mary. Thank you all for coming, and I hope to see you next week. I don't know off the top of my head who's coming, but it's going to be, they're going to have big shoes to fill to follow D Medium. Thank you very much. Night, Thank everyone. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Thank you. Good, Good night. Good night.